I'm Dave, welcome to Berg Junction. Opening today with a video review of the Pico Talent 2 EMU model. A little bit on the real train to start with. Uh, they are Bombardier built EMUs, they were ordered by Deutsche Bahn in 2008. They came into service in 2011. They're used today by Deutsche Bahn, by Abellio and by National Express on various routes in Germany. Uh, they do come in a variety of flavours. You start from little two-car units up to five-car. They're capable of 160 kilometres an hour, which is about 9,900 miles an hour. They've got a wide range of uses. They're used on S-Bahn services and all the way up to regional express services. So it's quite easy to find an excuse to have one if you like the look of them. Right, moving on to the model we've got here today. As you can see, this particular one is a four-car unit. It's a DB Regio uh, unit in a special, slightly modified livery for the Mosel Talbahn, which is a railway down the Mosel Valley between Koblenz and Trier in southwest Germany. Pico do produce quite a few different models of the Talent 2, from the two car units up to the five car units. Uh, there's a few different DB versions, some are in the plain DB Regio livery, some are in the uh, various different advertising liveries like this one. There's also, I think, a Leipzig S-Bahn one, there's a few Abellio ones, and a few National Express ones, and in a few different lengths as well, from two car up to five car. The RRP on them, is, uh, the Pico website, is sort of 200 euros to 270 euros. You can get them online for about 170 from certain websites. So there is a wide variety of them, so whatever you're modelling, the Pico do have, have you well covered for that one. The model comes in, quite, in a nice, well-designed, clear solid plastic box so you're not going to get too much chance of damaging it and it's sat in the pretty standard now plastic tray in the box you can see it comes as two semi permanently coupled two car parts halves if you will there is quite a clever system to putting these two together with quite a clever sort of split bogey arrangement that I'll come to later also in the box underneath we've got a little coupling bag with some couplers in it I will come on to these later in a bit more detail, but they are a representation of both uncoupled Schwarzenberg couplers and a coupled one and a coupling bar for running multiple unit arrangements. And then underneath the cardboard here, there's a whole lot of the normal paperwork and some instructions on pulling it apart and putting it together, as is pretty standard for any model like this. Right, so getting the model out of its box, let's take a look at the livery finish first. It looks very, very good. The DB Red is uniform, the colour the whole way around, there's no patches in it. The black surround around the windows as well is neat, the, the edges are very neat. And it also, as is true in reality, doesn't quite match up with the height of the windows, which is an odd one, but that's how it is in reality, and the model captures that as well. After sort of looking at it in great detail, the only issue that I've really spotted with it, and I can't even show you on camera, it's so minor, is that this yellow stripe here above the first class area is not actually solid. You can sort of see the red underneath it, but as you can see here, that is really invisible. That's only noticeable if you really, really look up towards it. Uh, the detail printing as well is really, really good. If I try and get it as close as I can, you can see that the text or the the logos are readable the class numbers by the windows are readable again if I, unfortunately i don't think it's going to come to focus this close but you can actually see the symbols on the first class area on the second class area the uh, numbers down here are all legible even though they are tiny and you can only reread them with a microphone magnifying glass they are all legible uh, if we turn it onto its roof as well, you can see it's going to come into focus. Possibly. No, it's not. Well, that's autofocus for you, working charm. Um, there are, again, on the roof, very well printed uh, warnings on the roof. Moving on to the moulding of the uh, model, that is just as good as the livery. Uh, the first thing, the windows are flush. With the body side, there's a bit of relief over the doors. Uh, there's a bit of relief here on the side of the cab over the handles. Um, and the window there and the grab. 
we just look at the front of the cab here, you can see there's, again, that's been nicely moulded, the vents under the cab window, the uh, hamster cheek look of the Talent 2, the lights are nicely moulded, the uh, windscreen wiper as well, that is uh, moulded, that's not printed, that is actually stood proud and is moulded. Uh, the roof of the cab has some good, some good moulding of the electrical equipment on the roof. We're just going to the side now, you can see the bogies as well have a decent bit of detail with the uh, suspension equipment, with the cab steps. Uh, I can't actually get it on camera, but it is worth noting that even though this is an N-scale model, they've actually uh, modelled the disc brakes on the wheels, which, uh, considering they're mostly obscured, is quite impressive. Unnecessary, but very impressive. If we look onto the roof, the uh, looks quite good. Again, we've got some lovely moulding on the uh, roof equipment, the boxes, or the equipment boxes on the roof. They've got various vents, slats, fans moulded on them. There's a nice representation of the uh, sort of heavy-duty cabling you find on these sort of units. Unfortunately, this would be the worst part of this model, or the, the only part that really lets it down, is these insulators around the pantograph and between the carriages. Is They're made of a very bright red plastic. They don't look as well moulded as anything else they don't and they're not finished as well there's no sort of a dull dull weathering i've had a look on photos of the real ones it looks like they are red in reality but obviously they're a lot duller than this uh, i don't know if this has maybe been made like this just to make them a bit more sturdy but i think it really does take away from the model itself while i'm up on the roof the pantograph uh despite the despite the uh, insulators the pantograph is metal it's quite fine actually as well, it's it's a lot finer than some of the other ones. Uh, it's nicely sprung, if I can just get it to spring with one finger. If I can just get it to spring, no, right not. Okay. But the pantograph is sprung and also doesn't seem to have the tendons that I've spotted so far on Fleischmann models of flipping itself up when it uh, springs up. It just springs up to the right sort of height and then stops, which is nice. And it is a, a very a nice looking pantograph on this one. I would say, despite the moulding issue with those uh, insulators and electrical equipment around the pantograph, this is a really well moulded model and it does look an awful lot like the real thing. I did mention the couplers that are in the box. Uh, now they are incredibly small, they're only a few millimetres in size. And they are a little dummy representation of the uh, Scharfenberg, Scharfenberg coupler that is now ubiquitous in Europe for these sort of units. Uh, that is the one applied as if you're just running it as a single unit, so that's the dummy uncoupled one. Obviously they aren't operational at this sort of size, they don't work. What is also provided, however, in the box is this. We have a very, very small little representation of two coupled couplers and a coupling bar. Now if we go and flip over the unit, there is this small peg here for you to clip this coupling bar to. Like so. Uh, that. And there's a corresponding one under there. This gives a slightly longer turn, more for train set. More for uh, train set sort of radius curves. What you can also do is you can see fitted to this unit, or this half of it, is there is actually a little Schorfenberg coupler. And if I can get them to do this through the viewfinder, like that, you can actually get them coupled with a little coupler like that. And that is a brilliant little detail. You can't fit both, unfortunately. The cup It's also quite delicate. Uh, I suspect it works much better when the units are pulling and pushing together. I think it will give way quite easily. So it does look very nice, but as it's just proven there almost on cue, it doesn't take much to fall apart. So... I might have to experiment if I can get a second unit and see see how good that actually is. You can split the two halves into single halves for servicing and for maintenance, um, but it is quite involved. You've got to take the body off, and then you take the uh, so you take the body off, and then you take this concertina off, and then you can pull them apart. So it's not something you do day to day. It's only if you're servicing it. Otherwise, those are permanently coupled. Uh, however, obviously the middle uh, does have this split bogey coupler, uh, where this. Uh, you could call this end the sort of male end. You've got the electrical contacts and a few uh, uh, physical clips to hold it together. And a wheel set, but no bogey. And on the other one, we could call it the female one, we've got the corridor connector 
um, the bogey frame minus wheel set, apart from that wheel, and then the associated plugs, if we can just bring that into focus, the plugs to match up. It's a bit sort of unnerving because it does need quite a bit of force to put it together. You simply line these two tags up with the top of the bogey frame on this side. Apologise at the slight angle, this is not the easiest thing to do sometimes, so try again. Push it in. There we go. You do have to push it in quite a way, and it's a bit a bit unnerving on your new 200 euro model. And there you go. Coupled. It's obviously slightly uh, not as... It's a bit looser than the uh, ones between these two. But there you go, you've now got your full car unit coupled together. Right, I've got some power going through it now, put it on my little test let, my little test plank. So have a look at it and show you a bit of the lighting that it does come with. We've got, as you can see there, functioning headlamps and marker lamp. Quick change of direction and we can get the tail lights to come up. Also, as I was saying, we do also have fitted to this as factory full internal lighting, which is quite nice down there. Now what you can see with the uh, lights on now is the interior. It is a very nice interior with a full set of seating. I think I will take the opportunity to put some uh, figures in this one as with the lighting on it it's quite clear that it is very empty because of the sort of size of the window so it definitely could do with some people in there. With this new angle, what you can see in the uh, leading cabs is there is sort of a visible moulding covering over the motor. That is uh, both. That is in both cabs, or both uh, leading vehicles anyway. Uh, it's pretty unavoidable, it's not particularly obvious unless you're looking for it. So I think we can allow that one. Unfortunately I can't really get this running on a layout at the moment, it's just going to have to sit on the plank. It is a good runner. Uh, it's a bit noisy out of the box, but with running in and a bit of good running, it does uh, quieten down. Obviously, as it's just a unit, there's no real issue with its pulling power. It can move itself, so that's all you really need with that one. And it does work nicely at a variety of speeds, which is nice. It is definitely worth the money. It is obviously 200 euros. That is a bit expensive. I bought this particular one for 150 pounds. Uh, that was after Brexit, so that was with the sort of drop in the pound. Uh, so you can get them on offer, and they are definitely worth it. They are. It is a very, very nice model. I think definitely worthy of mention is the finish of the livery. The livery is really, really good. I can't get it to show on camera some of the level of detail on that livery, but at the bottom of these, as you'll know, if you you know sort of know European railways, there's a lot of data panels on them and all of these are readable even the very very tiny ones are readable which is a very impressive it is a very good model and I would recommend it and given the fact they are used pretty much all over Germany mostly you know by Deutsche Bahn and by a few franchisees it will look pretty much in place on any sort of epoch 5 or 6 layout thanks for watching and hopefully I'll start doing a few more of these videos if this one takes off